जय राधा माधव कुंज जय गोपी जनाबल्ला गोपी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन यमुना तीर वन जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राधा गिरिधरे राधा गिरिधरि राधे जय राधा श्याम सुंदर राधा श्याम सुंदर राधे जय राधा दामोदर राधा दामोदर राधे जय जगन्नाथ जय जगन्नाथ जय बलदेव जय सुभद्रा जय गिरि गोवर्धन गिरि गोवर्धन गिरि गोवर्धन जय गिरि गोवर्धन जय गौरनिताय 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 जय गौरनिताय जय जय प्रभुपा 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 जय जय प्रभुपा गौर प्रेमस्ते हरि जय विश्वाद परमहंस प्रकाशार्य श्रीमदरणारविंद भक्ति वेदान स्वामी प्रभुपा की नाम शारेश्वर हरिदास ठाकुर की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव की जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रद्धनाथ श्वास गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की वृंदावन धाम की श्री मथुरा धाम की श्री मायपुर नवदीप धाम की जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की श्री गंगा माई की यमुना माई की भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की ग्रंथ राजमद भागवतम की ऑल ग्लोरियस सिम्बल डिवोरिस ऑल ग्लोरियस सिम्बल डिवोरिस ऑल ग्लोरियस सिम्बल डिवोरिस ऑल ग्लोरियस सिम्बल डिवोरिस फर्स्ट रीड फ्रॉम श्रीपाद लीलामृत October 15 Sri Prabhupada received a letter from Sumati Moraji in Mumbai Pooja Swami I'm in due receipt of your letter dated the 24th ultimo and glad to know that you have safely reached the USA after suffering from seasickness I thank you for your greetings and blessings I know by now you must be fully you must have full uh, you have must have recovered fully from the sickness and must be keeping good health i was delighted to read that you have started your activities in the states and have already delivered some lectures i pray to lord balakrishna to give you enough strength to enable you to carry the message of shri bhagavatam I feel that you should stay there until you fully recover from this illness and return only after you have completed your mission. Yeah, everything is normal with respects your sincerely Sumati Moraji. Prabhupada regarded the last line of this letter as especially significant. His well-wisher was urging him to stay in United in America. until he had completed his mission he had told the immigration officials in new, in new york that he would be staying in america for two months i have one month sponsor 
ship in Batla. He thought, and then I have no support. So perhaps I can stay another month. So he had said two months. Sumati Maraji, however, was urging him to stay on. He saw that the prospects for preaching to the Americans were good, but he felt he would need support from India. At any rate, he had spent long enough in Bakla, and now he had and now had one month left in America. So he decided to go to New York City and try to preach there before this time, before his time was up. But first he wanted to visit Philadelphia, where he had arranged a meeting with Sanskrit professor, Dr. Norman Brown at the University of Pennsylvania. Mrs. Agrawal was sorry to see him go. Sally said, after a month, I really loved Swami. I felt protective in a way, and he wanted to go to Philadelphia, but I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. I told him, I couldn't imagine you going to Philadelphia for two days. He was going to speak there and then to New York, but he knew no one in New York. If the thing didn't pan out in Philadelphia, he was just going to New York. And then there was no one. I just couldn't imagine. It made me sick. I remember the night he was leaving, about two in the morning. I remember sitting there as long as he could wait before Gopal took him to Pittsburgh to get on, the, on that bus. Gopal got a handful of uh, got a handful of change, and I remember telling him how to put the money in the slot so that he could take a bath at the bus station because he was supposed to take a bath a few times a day. And Gopal told him how he, to do that and told him about the automats in New York. He told him what he could eat and what he couldn't. And he gave him these coins in a sack. And that's all he left with us, and that's, he, that, and that's all he left us with. I'll finish it off. His sannyasi Shla Prabhupada was used to picking up and leaving one place for another. As a medical preacher, he had no remorse about leaving behind the quiet life of the butler YMCA. And he had no attachment for the domestic habitat where he would cook and stay with Sally Agarwal about vacuum cleaners, frozen foods, and American ways. But why had he gone to Butler? And why was he going to New York? He saw it as Krishna's grace. As a pure devotee of Krishna, he wanted to be an instrument for distributing Krishna consciousness. His stay in Butler had been helpful. He had gotten first-hand experience of American life, and he gained confidence that his health was strong and his message communicable. Communicable. He was glad to see that America had the necessary ingredients for the for his Indian vegetarian diet, and that the people could understand his English. He had learned that casual one-time lectures here and there were of limited value and that although there, there would be no opposition from the established religions, people individu individually were very much interested in what he had to say. On October 18th, he left Butler via Philadelphia for New York City. Prabhupada will speak from Srimad Bhagavatam. 10 to 4, chapter, 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 11. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय समुद्रिम देव देवोक्ता उपये मे शुतृति जाचारु सर्वांगीं किशोरी शुष्वलांकृतिता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे सामुद्रीम देवोक्ता उपये मे शतृति जाचारु सर्वांगीं किशोरी शुष्वलांकृता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे सामुद्रीम देवोक्ता उपये मे शतृति जाचारु सर्वांगी किशोरी शुष्वलांकृता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे चकमेशु कि सामुद्रीम देवोक्ता उपये मे शतृति चारु सर्वांगी किशोरी शुष्वलांकृता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे चकमेशु कि सामुद्रीम देवोक्ता उपये मे शतृति जाचारु सर्वांगी किशोरी शुष्वलांकृता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे चकमेशु कि सामुद्रीम देवोक्ता उपये मे शतृति जाचारु सर्वांगी किशोरी शुष्वलांकृता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे चकमेशु कि सामुद्रीम देवोक्ता उपये मे शतृति जाचारु सर्वांगी किशोरी शुष्वलांकृता परिक्रमती उद्वाहे चकमेशु कि Samudrim, unto the daughter of the ocean, Deva Devaktam, being advised by the supreme demigod Lord Brahma, upaye me, married, Shatadrutim, of the name Shatadruti, Yam, whom. Viksha, seen, charu, very beautiful, sarvangim, all the features of the body, 
He showed him youthful, shushtu, sufficiently, alankritam, decorated with ornaments, parikramantam, kram, parikramantim, circumambulating, udvahe, in the marriage ceremony, chakame, being attracted, Agni, the fire god. Shukim, unto Shuki, unto Shuki. Eva, like. Translated by, translation by Hitavandi Shukupad. Maharaj Bari, Barhishat, henceforth known as Prachin Barhi, was ordered by the Supreme Demigod Lord Brahma to marry the daughter of the ocean named Chatadputi. Her bodily features were completely beautiful and she was very young. She was decorated with proper garments and when she came into the marriage arena and began circumambulating it, the fire god Agni became so attracted to her that he desired her company exactly as he had formerly desired to enjoy Shuki. In this verse, the word Shushtvalankritam is very is significant. According to the Vedic system, when a girl is married, she is very profusely and gorgeously decorated with costly saris and jewelry. And during the marriage ceremony, the bride circumambulates a bride's groom seven times. After this, the bridegroom and the bride look at one another and become attracted for life. When the bridegroom finds the bride very beautiful, the attraction become, between them immediate, immediately becomes very strongly fixed. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, men and women are naturally attracted to one another. And when, you, when they are united by marriage, that attraction becomes very strong. Being so strongly attracted, the bridegroom attempts to set up a nice homestead and eventually a good field for producing gain, a grains. Then children come, then friends, and then wealth. In this way, the male becomes more and more entangled in the material conceptions of life. And he begins to think, begins to think, this is mine, and it is I who make them. In this way, the illusion of material existence is perpetuated. The words shukim iva are also significant. For the fire god Agni became attracted by the beauty of Chatadvati, while she was circumambulating the bridegroom Prachin Bahi just as he had previously been attracted to the beauty of Shuki, the wife of Saptarshi. When the fire god had been present long ago at the assembly of Saptarshi, he was attracted by the beauty of Shuki. When she was accumulating in the same way, Agni's wife named Swaha took the form of Shuki and enjoyed sex life with Agni. Not only the fire god Agni, but the heavenly god Indra, and sometimes even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, all are very highly situated demigods, are subject to being affected by sex at any time. The sex drive is so strong in the living entities that the whole material world is running on sex attraction only. And it's due to sex attraction that one remains in the material world and is obliged to accept different types of bodies. The attraction of sex life is more and more clearly explained in the next verse. Very nice. Um, perfect, yeah. The always, always uh, perfect, uh, very nice. Uh, 
wonderful you know, to be here. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Thapitam Yena Bhutale Vayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutupadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vitaushatan Vitamsha E Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyashta Kripa Sindho Vyevacha Patita Nam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Viva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Today is actually Sharad Purnima, Sharad Krishna Sharad Yerat Yatra. Here you speak today because today Krishna performed his Rasa dance with the gopis. And in the end, the gopis sang the gopi ki. Tabakatham vitam tapti kitnam. Very auspicious day. Um, and then some some parts of uh, um, I mean, some temples they celebrate uh, Damodar Mass from today. Some do from tomorrow. It doesn't help me to do it from today, you know. Um, so it's a festival day. So beautiful occasion and uh, another glorious month coming up. Uh, for us to execute more devotional service throughout the month. So in this verse here, Shri Prabhupada mentions, I mean, uh, it's explained that Lord Brahma ordered Prashin Barhi to marry the ocean, the Dora of the ocean, no, named Shatadruti. Now in those times when someone is to order the kids to marry someone, the kids were obliged, to, the son or daughter, Son were obliged to marry whoever the, the elders would tell them. That's not the case anymore now. Isn't it? Very, very difficult now. In those days, if even if even in those times when Prabhupada was there, a lot of times the boys would not even see the girl. The parents would say, This is the girl I've got for you, you must marry. And they would only see each other at the time of marriage. And normally, they used to, uh, the girls would get married when they would reach puberty. Generally, they would make, get married simply because of the fact that at that time, their parents were more conscious about protecting the, the daughter. And getting them married early, that means they have got someone in their mind as the husband. They're getting kind of ready for that person. They would get married, but they would not get to stay with the husband straight away. A lot of times they would stay in their own home until after such time where they're mature enough to go and stay with the husband. So in those times, this is how it's to work. And in, during those times, when the, after the marriage, the, the daughter would definitely get trained by the mother, the, the women in the family, on how to cook and all these other things that will, that is to look after the husband. 
when the wife would just look after the husband that is cooking nicely. And one of the best ways to attract the husband is to make some just preparation. Just by cooking nicely for the husband, the husband would become you know, so happy. And the, when the husband is satisfied, he would not think about anyone else. Do you have that? <laughs> yes, <my. laughs> so, so that's how it used to work before. You know? And those days, like I said, you know, um, the elders in the family, they would tell the son, to get married. This is the girl I've selected for. And this is because those times, they used to make sure that the, they get daughters from families, similar background. So in those days, um, so if someone is moderate uh, middle class family, they would find someone of the middle class family as well. Very rarely they would go down where someone who's way below them or even way higher than in terms of financially, economically situated. Simply because then, then there can be some friction there, some set challenges, you know. Um, but they would always try to find someone. I remember um, this one of my my brother-in-law's father, actually, he said uh, to one of my cousins about getting married, and he said, make sure you marry someone of the similar uh, economic uh, status. Otherwise, you'll have problems. So I think that's available, that's available advice because it, it does make sense. You know, if you marry someone who is very educated and very highly economically situated, then that person will look down on, on men, I mean, you, and, and, and vice versa. Um, but generally, the culture is that um, the women are nicely, uh, you know, trained by the, by the Mataji's, by their family members, so that they learn how to look after the husband. I think this culture is very much in Russia as well. I heard that the Russian ladies are trained by the mother to uh, you know, cook nicely. I don't know, maybe Mataji can uh, confirm that. Is that true, Mataji? Yeah. So even some parts of the Western countries, this culture is still there. You know? When the ladies are cooked nicely for the husband, then the husband would not go anywhere. Um, but if that's the case, and of course, there can be some challenges when there's fights go on. And you cook, I, I know you should know how to cook. I'm, I'm, I'm working in this. And, and then all these things happen. You know? But previously, the daughters used to be very humble and very submissive towards the husband. This is a culture that was there before. Because, and, but that doesn't mean that the daughters or the wives were treated as slaves, no. The daughters were treated as Lakshmi, as a representation of Lakshmi. When the daughter-in-law comes to the house, she's considered as God of the fortune entering the house. Is that in Mataji? Even in an Indian culture as well, that's how it's said. And, and when they get married, during the time of marriage, the, the bride is considered to be representative of Lakshmi Devi. And the groom is considered to be a representative of Vishnu when they get married. Only that time. But that doesn't mean I become Lakshmi Narayan. No. At that time, when they're getting married, they were, they, I know, they were treated in that way. So um, that culture was there. Even Sri Prabhupada got married at such an early age. And Srila Prabhupada mentions that the reason why that was done was more to safeguard the girls. And um, it is said that uh, even in Satkrasa Deepika, accordingly, it's said that when the girls get married, before the girls get married, they get based into uh, they, they enter kind of a uh, you know, lake or whatever it is, which has water in it, maybe like a tub, basically. And it's filled with water. And in the water, the name of the groom is placed in the water so that the name also gets into, you know, um, the girl's mind that this is the person I'm going to marry. And in time, sometimes, you know, when the girl gets married, they get henna drawn on the hand. And then in some way, they are, the boy's name is also written. So they are very conscious that this is the boy I'm marrying, no one else. However, the culture has changed now. This is not the case anymore, particularly in Western countries. This time has changed over a period of time. So many different things have happened. Gone are those days where, you know, elders would tell the daughter, son to get married to so-and-so, and daughter would tell her to get married uh, so-and-so, and they would oblige. It's not on the case. 
now people want to get married only after they have known each other simply because of the fact that there had been so many challenges that has been seen over a period of time in the western country unfortunately and, in, and now it's coming creeping into the eastern countries as well which is very unfortunate but nowadays the relationship is basically based on sex before uh, when a girl and a boy meet before they can even think about getting married they first want to have sex and they want to see if this if they enjoy that or not if that if they meet all the requirements in that in that aspect and if not then they will find someone else because ultimately for them sex life is the most important thing of course beauty as well so how you look how you you know behave all of that matters nowadays unfortunately you know. but it's a thing i mean we can't negate that uh, it's, it's not the right thing uh, but that's how most the people do you know in fact nowadays people don't want to get married a lot of times they end up staying together as partners this is very common now in western culture too they want to stay as partners and uh, they do everything like a husband and wife but the only thing they don't want to do is they want to commit to to become a official husband and wife i don't know why i was wor working uh, uh, with this lady who was with his partner for the last 20 odd years they had two or three children from him and yet they were um couple i mean as as, as partners but when I asked him so why did you get married so oh it's just too much too much you know what's different nothing different is going to be there it's just all the things going to be the official you're going to be hunting and what no it's just just going to be too much you know i don't it's, i don't want to get into all those that formality and all of that i still don't understand why why they would not want to it's just exactly the same thing nothing has changed so the only thing they'll have is the official recognition as husband and wife so um this is unfortunate but this is how the life is you know and uh in in the old in the uh, in the vedic culture um so when before the bride and groom meet each other and the mandapa who get for getting married in the bengali culture you see the the bride coming well dressed in fact all both bride and groom gets extremely dressed uh, nicely dressed so that they look gorgeous basically they look best you know and nowadays you know uh, they do all sorts of makeup to stand out or they had all this wrinkles on their face or what they have the makeup whatever they do to make them look out i mean if you look them on a normal day and you look on that but and you look on the other day when they're getting married you you can't you won't believe that that's the same person but it's just, it's just there you know that's there's nothing wrong with that they are it's their day so they get I think decorated press and all that. But in the Bengali culture, um the the, the groom uh bride would actually come with the eyes closed or actually have uh little leaves uh around his uh, her eyes so that so that he would not she would not see the husband until after she has accumulated the husband. In some parts of the Bengali culture, um uh, when the bride comes in, the bride is sitting on the on a on a uh that is all whatever and then there's some sort of cloth there that's stopping uh that's uh, uh, stopping him from seeing the groom uh, the bride and then the bride comes and then uh between them there's a curtain there and then the uh the both put their hands in each other on top of each other underneath the curtain and then that's the first time they meet and then now they officially uh, you know the brahman would actually say you know um the bride the groom and uh the bride and the groom are now you know together and then they will open up uh, put down the curtain and then they would see each other for the first time on that day on that day while they went nicely decorated and then of course you know there's so many nice niceties that happen uh, during the marriage ceremony i'm sure probably the brahmacharis might have some challenge at the moment they might but i'm sure when you do get ever married you'll understand all of that um but um and then 
they circumambulate the fire seven times, like seven times or something like that. So this is where Prabhupada mentions that when they were circumambulating the fire, Agni got very much attracted to uh, Shruta Duthi. But she was extremely gorgeous. She was so beautiful. And when someone is even nicely dressed, then anyone actually might get attracted to her. No? Uh, in this case, the Agni they become so attracted to her that she wanted to, he wanted to enjoy with her. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, thing, challenges these days is, I think Chanaka Pandit says that men's real enemy is when that person has an extremely gorgeous, beautiful wife. The reason being is because then the husband's always in a worry. Is this is my wife seeing someone else? Or will someone else hook up with my wife or not try to attack my wife because she's beautiful? That's why it's always said, don't marry a beautiful wife. <laughs> I'm not saying you, you, you know, you see whatever you want. But, uh, but Jesus once generally said that um, when you have an extremely beautiful wife, you have to be a bit wary. You have to be cautious. You have to make sure she's nicely cared for, satisfied in every aspect, so that she would not consider leaving it. Uh, you know. But nowadays, unfortunately, very people who have been in marriage for more long period of time, I'm seeing people who have been in marriage for lot, over 15, 20 years, and when they change countries, they find new people. They find someone else more attractive. And then um, they leave. And that's simply because they want to enjoy sex life. That's all it is, basically. If they don't get the best from their husband, then they'll find elsewhere. That's both husband and wife are saying, you know. If the husband's not getting what he's wanting, he will go elsewhere. And if the wife's not getting care, the attention, everything from the husband, he will leave. This is the uh, unfortunate thing. Uh, in the previous uh, years, like uh, this is way uh, 50 years back, uh, in those those times when the husband and wife would get married, no matter what the challenges they were, they would stay together, no matter what. Simply because at those times, there wasn't any social media. There wasn't anything, you know, uh, attractive that would divert them, you know. Today, there's so many things that can divert people's attention. And people are get attracted to so many different things nowadays. Before, no matter what, they fight, they would argue with each other, uh, you know, on and off, but they will still stay together. That generation has, has is basically kind of almost gone, basically. I've seen uh, my parents' age and their time all the people I've seen, they basically stayed together. They have, they never thought about someone else. They, they might fight with each other, they argue, what not, you know. But it never, they never, never separated because they were fully committed and they had children. They were thinking also about children. You know, when I have, when you have children, separating from uh, your partner, or wife, or husband, becomes uh, difficult. And in fact, the children suffer the most. I remember uh, when I first came to New Zealand in 2005, I was working in Sakanini, and this, I was at the bus stand in, in Manukau. And this young uh, Samoan boy came to me, he was maybe about 15 years old, something like that. And he comes to me and says, hey, uh, sorry, uh, boss, uh, I don't know you, but uh, you like, look like a smart guy, and I wanted to get, see if I can get some advice from you. I said, what advice? And he says to me, um, you know what? Um, from my partner, I've got a one-year-old son, and I uh, want my son to stay with me and not with my partner. I said, why? Are you not staying with your partner anymore? He said, no. I'm now seeing someone else. And I said, well, what happened with the first one? And he said, uh, well, I don't love her anymore now, you know? I said, then why do you have a child? You're not, you know. I said, look, a child does not only need husband, uh, a dad. A child needs both a mother and father. 
both. And what you what you do is that the child will grow up having the same thing that you're doing, and that child will do the same thing that you you've done, and it will the cycle will go on and on because the thing is normal. You know? but if if you want a child uh, with moral values instilled in him and all of that, then you make sure that you stay, go back to your partner, whatever you need to do, and just look after the child, give him all the necessities that he needs to become a good citizen. He said to me, oh, one of my friends told, said to me that you can't be eating dal and rice every day. I said, that's not, that's different. Dal and rice is different from, from your partner. You can't, you can't compare that with uh, a partner, you know. Um, so this is unfortunately, and sometimes people say, oh, you should try variety. So that's why this is, unfortunately, this is how the degraded society has become. And it's all based on sex life. And, and this is the main reason why we are in this material world, because of this um, enjoyment that we've been hankering, we've been wanting all these years, all past lives we've been, that's why we are going to a cycle of birth and death. You know, um, in the case of uh, Bururava in Urvashi, Guru Rava was so much attached to Urvashi when, when uh, he met her. Um, that, that was the story of Anishman Bhagavatam. And just because she was a um, dancer, would you call it? I'm not sure how you describe it. Urvashi was one of the dancers in, in, in Swargalo. Indra's uh, uh, entertainers, one of the entertainers, Rambhai and uh, Urvashi, was, like, Urvashi was one of them. She was extremely beautiful. And Guru Rava, um, had so much attachment for her was uh, that he could not leave. He could not forget her. So we also have this. And then also we see how the Prabhupada mentions here that even demigods in those times used to uh, you know, destroy someone's chastity. We see uh, the story of uh, Indra and uh, um, how, um, what is it, uh, Ahalya, the story for our mind, we see that Ahalya is so beautiful that Indra wanted to enjoy with her. And when her husband went to the uh, banks to have uh, his bath, he came in the form of his uh, husband and uh, Ahalya could not figure out that it's not my husband. And then he, um, she had, uh, some conjugal relations with him. And when his husband came back, one of the rishis, I can't remember what it uh, huh? Gautam Rishi or something like that, yeah. So when Gautam Rishi or whatever he uh, came back, he saw Indra leaving his, uh, uh, his uh, house, uh, his hut. And then he actually uh, uh, really got angry on Ahalya and he basically, uh, you know, gave him, uh, gave, uh, cursed him, cursed her. And so you become a stone. And uh, Ahalya basically pleaded to her husband, said, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I actually thought all, all this time it was my husband, but it was Indra, I didn't know that. Because of that, she uh, pleaded uh, for mercy, and then husband said, don't worry, when Lord Ram will come, he will uh, put his love speed on, your, on yourself, and then that's how you can get delivered. So there's so many stories in, in, the, in, the, in the Quran as well, how even the demigods used to, uh, you know, uh, abuse uh, their position, and they used to come and uh, enjoy someone else's wife, uh, which is not appropriate. But even we have to understand that demigods are also living beings, of course, with high, some additional powers or whatever. It is. All that. So, um, um, yeah. I mean, uh, Having a very beautiful wife was, I mean, they, they met up, they um, got married, but uh, Agni Dev basically wanted to enjoy. And uh, um, this, is, this is an abominable act, actually, trying to even have eyes on someone else's wife. Um, but these days, it's become a common thing, you know, unfortunately. The society has become so degraded, so which is why we are so grateful to Prabhupada. The Prabhupada has given us knowledge. 
that is why uh, and then how we can go back make a life successful not getting calories the whole thing um, uh, otherwise we don't know where we'll be today yeah you may be maybe the pub watching uh rugby sevens oh sorry what rugby world cup someone else may be somewhere sleeping and getting up at 12 o'clock in the morning get a weekend that's how people live right these days so um, I think I'll end here. Um, anyone's got any comments, any um, questions in the hand? No? I think that's uh, straight and simple. Uh, <laughs> it's either I was clear enough or... I, or <laughs> Granth Rashimad Bhagavatam ki, Tapopat ki, all glosses of the good. Hare Krishna.